And first of all, I would like to introduce you to two people from the European Union for Young Scientists. They are from Germany, and their names are Alex Koroshenshev and Felix Sevin. Give them a warm applause. Hi, everyone. I'm Felix. And I'm Alex from the University of Basel. We're from Germany, and we were invited to SIES at this year's European Union Contest for Young Scientists. Together, we're working on our project Hoverboard, a Magnetically Levitated Vehicle. On this slide, you can see one of our magnetically levitated vehicles. After two years of research, we now have a device that can levitate and fly over an aluminum surface. From the very beginning, it was our aim to uh, build our, tr our, truly, uh, our own truly levitating hoverboard. Uh, using magnetic levitation technology. Currently, half, uh, current, in current magnetic levitation trains, half of the technology is inside the train, and the other half of the technology is inside the track. In consequence, the track is very expensive, as it needs a lot of copper coils and sensors in it. We use a new method where all of the technology is inside the train, and we only need a cheaper, uh, inactive aluminum surface. Now we want to show you a short clip of one of our current uh, train-based models. So our models, model has four thrusters. You can see two of them in the picture right now. They're these black disks. The clip will start with the, road, with the thrusters spinning. After that, the model will levitate by about one centimeter uh, over the aluminum plate. Then it will start moving forwards and backwards. And this is done by slightly tilting the thrusters by a few degrees. At the end of the video, you will see that our model is capable of climbing up and down sloped surfaces. Wait, go back. Uh, OK, the movie's not working. Uh, OK, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. So, on a very basic level, we achieve levitation by using small magnets like this. And we have an aluminum surface. Because if we move a magnet over a conducting surface, they interact with each other. Uh, because it induces currents into the metal. Now, what you want to achieve is you want, to, uh, you want the currents to move in a certain manner so that they create their own opposing magnetic field, so that we have this magnet and a magnetic field inside this metal that creates our lift. So with this knowledge, we would start our first experiments. We would craft our own rotating disks. You can see a few examples on the top right. And we would then attach these to different motors. In the beginning, we would arrange the magnets alternating, facing up and down, so it would uh, have the fastest possible change of the magnetic field when rotating. You can see this in the example down here. But uh, yeah, and we hoped that this would create a strong enough current so it would be able to levitate. But unfortunately, this didn't work, so we had to test uh, different magnet arrangements, such as the Halbach array. This finally worked, so we would kill, build, be able to build our first test apparatus and analyze the correlation between levitation height, rotation speed, and the electric voltage and current. Mm -hmm. As Felix already mentioned, we were, of course, not using one magnet. We are using an array of magnets, the Kalbach array. It is depicted at the top of the slide. It is a magnetic array where the magnetic field gets strengthened on one side and weakened on the other side. 
which is basically perfect for our application. But we ran in a lot of trouble because this magnetic array is very unstable and very unsafe because the magnets, they push against each other and they just try to break out. So we developed a solution for this. You can see it below, which is a magnetic field that has the same magnetic properties uh, while being stable. So, and even the usable magnetic field increases, which was really the thing we wanted to achieve. Now, what we do is we arrange this uh, a pattern in a circular fashion, like you can see in this simulation. There are 12 magnets that are being spun by a motor, and underneath you can see the metal sheet with the induced currents inside it. This is a console multiphysics simulation. Like, um, we made a lot of those simulations because the effects that occurred in our prototypes were way too complicated to calculate them. On basis of simulations like those, we collected more than 100,000 data points in order to optimize our prototypes. Mm -hmm. Now, as Felix already showed in the video, we can also control our prototypes by tilting the engines. But the thing is, uh, usually if you have a thruster like a rocket engine or a propeller, if you tilt the thruster forward, then the thrust goes forward as well. But in our application, if you tilt the thruster forward, the thrust goes sideways. And yeah, explaining why that happens is very complicated. And to understand why that happens, you needed to make a simulation. But nevertheless, we are able to use effects like this. And if we arrange multiple thrusters in the right fashion, we can actually create thrust in a direction we can control, like depicted in the illustration left. Mm -hmm. Now we want to show you our current hoverboard models. We have two right now. Both of them are CNC milled and not 3D printed like the previous versions. And this allows us a more precise manufacturing using more rigid material. With this, we can have a better controllable and smoother movement. The two top pictures show our current train-based model, which you have seen in the video before. It has uh, four thrusters, which can be tilted along one axis, left and right. And this allows it to move along one axis. The two bottom pictures show our current uh, hoverboard, which is able to move freely in any direction over an aluminum surface. And uh, this is done by having two pairs of thrusters. This is the first pair, and this is the second one. And the first pair is uh, able to be tilted left and right along one axis, and the second pair is uh, able to be tilted orthogonally to this one. Now, uh, finally, we want to share with you a few details of how we developed our models and of how we work together in a team. Let's start with the development. Well, we had the basic rule that we would s first start our experiments in a small scale and only implement them in our models if they were successful. Now, let's demonstrate this with our first example, the development of our thrusters. So we would start with small-scale ex experiments of a single rotor and just testing out the different magnetic arrangements, and only if they were successful, we would then implement them in our models. And same goes for the end. When we wanted to be able to move forward and backwards, we would need tiltable rotors, so we would uh, try, uh, we would build an experiment with one single rotor, and if this was successful, we would then implement it in our model as well. Also, another rule we had was we would split up our project in different small steps and we would uh, develop our project step by step. And uh, we would demonstrate this with the abilities of the hoverboard. So at the beginning, our aim was just uh, to be able to fly and levitate. Then we wanted to be able to move forwards. When we accomplished that, we wanted to be able to move forwards and backwards. And then we wanted to control the movement so we can use it for our train-based model. Also, we wanted the train-based model then to be able to move on sloped surfaces, just like trains. And then we wanted to uh, enable movement in all directions so we can build a freely movable hoverboard. And currently, we're working on controlling the free movement. Mm -hmm. 
So, on a final note, we want to elaborate uh, our uh, cooperation with each other, because, our collaboration, because um, we are the only ones presenting at SIAS who are actually a team. And we think uh, it had a great impact on our work, because Felix did most of the engineering-related work, well, whereas I was the physicist and did most of the physics-related work. So the way it worked, after we had our initial idea, it was a back and forth between engineering and theory. So if we have a, had a prototype and it didn't work, we went back to the drawing board, tried different solutions, went back to the drawing board, and it was a back and forth. Because the thing is, most of our prototypes in the first couple of months didn't work at all. So, yeah, we needed to do a lot of optimization and corrections. But additionally, in scientific work, there, uh, there are a lot of administrational tasks, like documenting your research or just create, illustrating the posters. And it is a huge relief if you can divide the workload between two people. So, the thing is, if well, regarding our timeline, it is very important that you uh, don't give up because failure is a significant part of, of the scientific method, that you just go back to the drawing board time after time. And we think that after you overcome the major challenges, it can be a lot of fun to do research. Thank you very much. Amazing presentation, guys. Even more applause to Felix and Alex. What applause! Felix and Alex. Felix and Alex. I have a question for you. You can come over here. It's so amazing that you're collaborating in a team as well. Isn't it an amazing presentation of them, like what they're into? So cool. And the question we were curious about when we were sitting behind here and thinking like when you collaborate two people of you has it been like some tough moments like some challenging moments where you don't want to collaborate or has it only been a funny moments and good mo mo memories like how is it to be two in this project yeah we will see who will be honest here now no <laughs> <laughs> oh well to be honest we never had like a moment where we didn't want to work together at all oh, that's so really nice. it's not <laughs> if, if that would have happened, it probably wouldn't have worked out that well. Mm -mm -mm. So most of the time it was actually pretty fun working together because mm -hmm. conducting science on your own, I would like think it could get a little boring if, you just, if you're always alone. So doing it with someone together is actually pretty cool. Mm. <laughs> yes, That's because nice I think we became just reliant on each other after a while and couldn't continue without each other. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's why it was a uh, pillar why it worked so well. So nice to see the both of you together, and now we'll do a togetherness applaud to these two gentlemen. Thank you so, so, so much. And I can take the clicker as well, yeah. Thank you, guys, and you can walk over there. And applause all the way, Felix and Alex!